Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to a brand new series that we will be titling uh, the Let Us uh, Let Us Reason uh, video series, and uh, it's apologetic in nature. And uh, today's topic that we will begin with has to do with the doctrine of Tawheed. In fact, we may even call it Tawheed Dilemma. But here is the good news. With me here in studio, my dear brother and friend, Sam Shamoun, uh, who is going to basically discuss with me a number of things that are mentioned in the Quran that contradict what our Muslim friends typically would say about the doctrine of Tawheed, which in their mind, meaning that God, Allah, is an absolute one, has no partners whatsoever. Sam, right. welcome, <clears throat> brother. It's a pleasure to be here, but as is my habit, I always like to invoke the God and Father of our Amen. Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We trust the Father will bless us. Amen for the glory of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to speak truth clearly and accurately so that we represent what Muslims believe <clears throat> correctly so that they can see the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and that Christians can also be emboldened in preaching and proclaiming the truth of Jesus Christ. So Amen. we ask the Father to bless us and cover us by the blood of Christ and fill us with the Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, with that said, <clears throat> it is vitally important that we make a distinction between two types of monotheisms, right? You have what's called Unitarian monotheism, the mm -hmm. belief that God is not just a singular being, but a singular person, a singular consciousness. And that's what Muslims Correct. claim. They claim that Allah is a singular person as well as a singular being, even though they may not use the term person, but that's what they believe. Correct. Now, there's also what we call Trinitarian monotheism. This is what we are, that although there's one eternal being, one God, <clears throat> this one God eternally exists as three eternal relationships or as three eternally distinct but inseparable persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And real quickly, let me define the term person because we have Christians who may not know what we mean by person, That's let correct. alone Muslims. That's correct. By the term person, we do not mean a flesh and blood, finite human being. Because when I use the term person, typically the first thing that comes into a person's mind is a flesh and blood temporal human being. That's not how we're using the term person in reference to God. By person, we mean that the Father, as well as the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Father is a person in the sense that he has emotions, divine emotions, a divine mind, a divine will. He has <clears throat> cognizance, meaning he's aware, self-awareness. He, he's aware that he exists, and he's aware that others exist. That's how we use the term person in reference to the Godhead, not a limited, physical, flesh and blood human being. So we believe there are three persons, one God, whereas Muslims would say there's only one person who happens to be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we're going to challenge that assertion. Right. We're going to show that even the sources of Islam, particularly the Quran, does not teach Unitarian monotheism. Yeah. And let's start, by the way, with, with one very important uh, verse in the Quran. It's, yes. uh, everybody will see it on the screen right now. It's chapter 15. Uh, chapter 15, verses 28 to 29. And you, you see it also. That's right. Tell us, what is the issue here that our Muslim friends need to pay attention to? Well, I want, um, let me just, uh, well, what, do you want to read the verse out loud at first? Yeah, and I mean, we'll it, it will it. say, Remember when thy Lord said to the angels, I create man of dried clay, of dark loom molded, and when I shall have fashioned him and breathe of my spirit into him, then fall, fall ye down and worship him. Now, obviously, what we find here is an echo of the Genesis account of the creation of the first man, Adam, right? Correct. It's not identical, but we see that the Quran is parroting or echoing the biblical account of the creation of man in Genesis chapter 1, particularly Genesis chapter 2. What we want to emphasize is the role that the Spirit plays in animating the first human being. So my question would be, why did Allah breathe his Spirit into the man? For what purpose? To give him life. So here you see two things. Allah breathed out the Spirit. So the Spirit does not originate from creation. The Spirit isn't a creature that Allah made. <clears throat> the Spirit right. comes forth, springs forth, originates from the very being, the Arabic term, that, the essence of Allah. So he's not a part of creation. That and is I want to show one. the people what you're saying here. If, yes. you, if we look at the, the slide itself, here, he says, my spirit into him. Right. So it's coming out of Allah. Because it's breathed out of him. Correct. Breathe of my spirit. So if Allah is breathed, now obviously, the Muslims would agree with us, this has to be metaphorical. Well, see, that's also a little tricky, depending on what Muslims you ask. But typically, those Muslims who don't identify as Salafi Muslims, 
if they're Ashari Maturidi and they're not Salafi Muslims, they would say this is metaphorical because Allah is not a physical being. He doesn't have physical breath. So what does the metaphor convey? When we think of the term breath, we think of life because if you don't breathe, right. can't live. Right. So when it says Allah breathe, that's simply a metaphorical way of saying that the spirit is the very life. In other words, when Allah wants to give life, he gives life through the spirit. So Allah breathed out the spirit, so it originates from him, into man for the purpose of animating man. So right there you see two things. The spirit originates from Allah. It's a part of him. Correct. Not part of creation. But the spirit also gives life. He is the one who animates creation. In other words, the spirit is creator and life giver. Now, uh, do the math. Allah, his spirit, my spirit. How many is that? That's two. But I thought Islam teaches absolute Unitarian monotheism, exactly. in Arabic, Tawheed, yeah. which we may define a little later. But So I just want to clarify, what you're trying to do here is to build a systematic case that the spirit that our Muslim friends think is no other than the angel Gabriel, yeah, that's what they think. as we will progress with our teaching. Yes, we'll get into that. So far, from the start, we're seeing that the spirit is actually equal to Allah. Put it this way, if Gabriel is a spirit, then Gabriel is not a creature. He's an eternal essential part of Allah's own being, and he's creator and life giver with Allah. So if you want to say it's Gabriel, then you're going to have to deny he's a creature because he's breathed out by Allah. Now, this is not the only passage. Someone say, well, you're just focusing on one passage. You're ignoring what the Quran teaches in its totality. Well, there's another passage we need to turn to to further confirm that the Quran identifies the spirit of Allah as distinct from Allah, but co-creator and life giver. Let's go to chapter 19 of the Quran. Verses 16 and 21. And everybody we will see that on right the screen. now, actually. Yes. So, uh, <clears throat> let me chapter just... 19, verses 16 to 21. Correct. So here, let's look at chapter 19, verse 16 to 19. Yes. Yeah, we don't need 20, 21. But if you notice what it says, and I'm looking at the screen to see, it says, when men mention Maryam, Maryam, that's the Arabic term for Mary, the Blessed Mother Correct. of our Lord. Correct. So this is proclaiming the annunciation of the birth of our Lord Jesus to his Blessed Mother. Correct. The birth annunciation. Of Christ. It says, Mention Miriam in the book when she drew aside from her family to an eastern place. So she took a veil to screen herself from them. Now, here's where it's going to get really exciting for Christians who may have been misled into thinking that the Quran denies there's a plurality within the essence of Allah. Because that's what Muslims will typically tell you, right? Correct. Allah is absolutely one in person and being. We don't believe in a plurality of divine persons. Well, watch here. Then we sent to her our spirit. And I want to make a note. Because those who don't, who don't read Arabic right. may be reading a translation that says, our angel. However, since you are a native Arabic speaker, Arabic is your mother tongue, you can confirm that the Arabic word here is ruh. That's right. It doesn't say, now, what is the Arabic word for angel? Uh, malak. And now, you can confirm, They can if someone reads Arabic, they can confirm as well. It doesn't use that term. It uses the term ruh. That's right. We sent our Ruh spirit. But here's what's amazing. This spirit appeared to her in a well-made well man. So now notice Allah's spirit can assume human form. Correct. Allah's spirit can appear as a man, manifest as a human being. That's right. But then it gets better. Well-made man. Now, you see that, right? But then it gets better. Mary is not aware this is the spirit of Allah appearing as a man. She thinks it's an actual flesh and blood male trying to do something to violate her. So we'll notice what she says. She says, surely I fly or I seek for refuge from you to the beneficent God. I seek Allah's protection from you if you're one guarding against evil. Now notice what he says. The spirit now has a conversation with Mary. He said, I am only an apostle of your Lord. So he's a Rasul. So here we right. see that the spirit is subject subordinate to Allah. He is the messenger, apostle of her Lord, apostle of Allah. But then he says something amazing, that I will give you a pure boy. That's right. And he is talking in the first person here. I will. Who is the I? This apostle. Who is this apostle? The spirit who appeared as a man. So the spirit didn't say Allah will give you. I have been sent specifically to give you a pure boy. So here we see that Jesus' sinlessness is affirmed, that Mary's going to conceive a child that's absolutely pure, so it affirms the sinlessness of Jesus Christ. But what I want people to notice here is that the Spirit appears as a man, can speak and be spoken to. So it shows that Allah's Spirit is not simply Allah's power, 
his strength or his force. He's an actual person distinct from Allah. So notice it says, I am a messenger of your Lord, and I'm only a messenger from your Lord. That means Allah and the Spirit are not identical, are they? That's They're right. They're two different persons, right? That's right. And yet the Spirit gives life because he says, I was sent specifically to give to you as a virgin, conceive as a virgin, a pure son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though the Quran doesn't call him Lord, but you get the point. Yeah. So what do we establish in this passage? The Spirit is a person. You can speak to him. He can speak to you. The Spirit can appear as a man, <clears throat> appear in human form, and the Spirit creates life. Another passage testifying to the fact that the Spirit, distinct from Allah, subject to Allah, can give life and create the way Allah does. So my question is, how can the Spirit not be God when He can do the things that only God can do, namely create and give life? Yeah, and that's shirk by itself. And obviously, this is a very deep topic, and uh, I, you know, you can see why uh, we cannot really cover everything just in one video. That's why we're going to call it a series. And uh, Sam, tell us what would be discussed in the next episode. Uh, Lord willing, in the next episodes, we're going to continue to unpack the divine identity of Allah's Spirit, showing that He does things that only Allah can do and bears the very names of Allah and pr provide proof He is not a created angelic being. So that's what we're going to do in the upcoming series, Lord Jesus willing. Amen. Thank you. And thank you to all of you who have joined us in this very first video of this brand new series that we will be entitling, Let Us Reason. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.